yourself to us as we continually seek you, Lord. In the secret, in the quiet place.
Day Committee welcomes sa ato ang online service and for today we'll be continuing our series about the wartime lifestyle with a message about wartime finances. And before ta magsugod, I invite you to bow down your heads. Let's pray first. Lord, ako salamat that we are able to continue on this um, godly lifestyle that you have called us to have that in this life we will have a kind of um, service to you nga dili among sarili og among enjoyment among pleasure among ang uh, entertainment ang ang number one priority but rather ang priority namo is among service to you and through that is through an an adoption of a lifestyle called the wartime lifestyle that we live in a world where there is war ug tungod sa war there are many changes na mo kailangan buhaton in how we serve you. I pray, Ubanimi, as we discuss about money matters, finances, things that are close to our heart, but actually um, very also close to your heart in how we serve you. I pray that you guide us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Atong scripture verses for today is found in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 to 12. Let's read together. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world, and we cannot take anything out of the world. But if we have food and clothing, with this we will be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evils. It is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pangs. Verse 11, But as for you, O man of God, flee these things, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, gentleness, fight the good fight of the faith, take hold of the eternal life to which you were called, and about which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. As we learn more about the verses, about fighting, standing strong in our faith, or standing up, 
to the to the plans of the enemy and to putting on the armor all these things about fighting about um all these things about being in war and being prepared for war but ang pinaka interesting kanina verse atong gibasa because this is very closely related as Paul was explaining to Timothy here um a a fatherly advice because as you know in their relationship um Timothy was raised up in a household nga iyang mama o iyang lola ang nag-raise up siya. We don't know exactly why, but we assume that it was in a fatherless household. Ug tungod ana, Paul took up the role of a spiritual father sa iyang kinabuhi. And so Paul was giving advices, he he mentored si Timothy and then later on katong nag-minister na si Timothy as an an elder and also a shepherd didto sa sa church sa community kung asa siya na assigned to, Paul was giving him letters to encourage him and to also guide him kung si mga dapat niya bantayanan as someone who is very young. And what is most interesting sa kaning verse na ang gihatag ni Paul, no, is that kaning advices niya, ang towards the end, kaning last two verses correlates or corresponds to fighting. But ang few verses before Anna talks about money. Fighting and money. And for Paul, this to go hand in hand kaning duha dili nimo pwede ma, ma, masalikway ang usa or or isolate one you cannot isolate one without talking about the other connected sila when it comes to our faith and talking about money and so gihimo na noon yung karong as an opposite but as for you man of god flee these things so for him this is talking about na pag-abot sa iyang faith it points us to the first point that we have when you're busy with money and possessions, you cannot fight. If ang atuang lifestyle, ang atong life is all about gathering, savings, money, possession, income, assets, net worth, if kada atong kinabuhi, we cannot fight the good fight of faith. We cannot. Dili jud kaya. Dili pwede. Magbangga jud sila, permi sila magbikil because one direction goes here and the other goes there. Mao na ang pasabot ni Paul. But as for you, fight the good fight of faith. So gin explain niya that many people choose and desire to be rich in kinabuhi nila na imong inani. And kung tanawon ni mo, ever since we are very young, we have been conditioned to do so. Pagpili parang nato sa education or sa career, permi ang leaning asang opportunities, asa makakwarta ta, asa maging successful ta in life, so to speak. But we can learn from the Bible that success is not about gathering assets. In fact, Jesus, in his talks, had many parables that talks about people na giapas lang nila possession, and then they end up in ruin. Even Ecclesiastes many times reminds us about these facts nga useless mag-seek acquire of wealth din yung madala to the next place at the same time, ang uban lang makabinipisyo sa yung kahago. And so, many, if we follow the lifestyle that God wants us to have, obviously, ang wartime lifestyle, it's not about the accumulation of wealth. In a time of war, useless ang imuhang concept of possessions because anytime you lose the war, if mapili ang usakanasun in a war, Useless to properties and possessions, even money itself, because mawala ang value. Because it will be taken over by the winner na country na nagpildi sa inyo ha. And that's why, in a war, di ka maguna-una, ala, magpadato o kay panahon sa gira. No, ang buhato ni mo, to preserve what you have, you make sure that you win the war. Matthew 6 reminds us, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. In Matingala Kadiha, ngano ang description ni Jesus towards money is synonymous with God. Meaning, pag mag apas kagwarta, it's like serving God. And I have to clarify that because. Um, the Greek word used for money here is mammon. It is usually associated with wealth na, na earn either through pangawat or through unrighteous means. So meaning, what the, the verse implies here, it's not talking about na di ka pwede magtrabaho or di ka pwede mag, 
um, earn of money because that's why we have to make sure when it comes to our life decisions, especially if we follow through a verse, did it simply follow lang literally because we have to look at other parts of the Bible first and mutan at cohesion na harmony because the Bible also reminds us that um, kinang lang tamag provide for our family and the Bible also reminds us that we must work with our own hands to help others and also to provide sa ato ang own needs na to. So, nagpakita po diha nga we have to be careful also in balancing everything. Pag-abot sa, especially pag-abot sa finances. But what is very clear here is if ang imuhang goal, imong mindset is chase after money, that's synonymous, same way as chasing after a God. Mauna ato ang first Timothy ganiha. Um, as we go through kanina verses, we'll be slowly be able to see that the Bible is very serious when it comes to acquiring wealth. And makawonder ka na all this time, nga no, we have been conditioned, labi na ang atong generation, nga ever since we are very young, nga condition jud ka ayuta, what is the best position or job or, or situation for us to get as much money as we can. We can see this concept about God and money, money clearer. There is a, a story that explains an encounter that Jesus had in his ministry. It's in Mark 10. He said to him, Teacher, all these I have kept from my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You lack one thing. Go sell all that you have and give to the poor. You will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. Disheartened by the saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Now, there are many things na pwede na to makuha from this story. And one of the things na atong pwede makuha dali is that the man was truly righteous. Even the verse 21 here recognizes that Jesus loved him because he was really a righteous man. As Because when the Bible talks about righteousness, it talks about he was a lawful man. Meaning, as far as the Torah is concerned, the law of God is concerned, he followed everything. Sacrifices, ang mga rituals kinakal niya buhatun, ang mga i-follow niya ng mga certain rules. He really followed everything. Isunod niya talan. And Jesus loved him because ang desire niya to become good in that sense, righteous or lawfully good according to the law was really there. But there's one thing na nakita niya. And Jesus' response here was a radical na decision na dapat buhatun. It's not so much na mahimo siyang standard para sa atong tanan. Because we can learn even as we study the Bible nga dagag mga dato po na Christians in the New Testament. It talks about um, certain believers sa mga letters ni Paul, nga na ay mga balay, na ay balay na sila ang nag-host, dito nag-gather daily, breaking of bread, na iba na mga properties, na iba na mga yuta na gidonate nila some of their lands. So na po, wala yung kasabaan ni Paul towards those who have a lot. Even Paul talks about in his epistles how to take better care sa ilang mga servants or ilang mga slaves. And that time, mga dato lang na ay mga inato. And so, this is not talking about a, a standard para sa tanan na dapat tatanan, wala possession, dapat ibaligyan nato. No. But Jesus purposely said this in order to reveal what is in the heart of the young man. And you will see with this response, and as you, you lack one thing, go Sell all that you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. Now, for most of us, continue juta. There's a will, there's a way. Mga saying na rin. Ang response supposedly sa isa katao who really wants to follow God. Ako, if gusto juta ko follow Jesus and he will reply me with this, mag-try juta ko way na pwede ba na ilang way? Pwede half lang? Pwede one-fourth lang? I'll try to negotiate. I gusto juta ko. In the same way na naakay gusto paliton in mall, kulang imong kwarta, but last day na jud to, yung gusto jud kay ni mo lalain. Mga ito, okay, pwede i-reserve di, pwede, um, pwede i- kaning akong isa ka-item, i- para mabawas na ang, 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 ang price, overall price. Mga ito, jud okay, kagway. Any means that you have in order to attain what you want to attain. And his response, kaning righteous man, his response just showed na in terms of priority, Righteousness, God, and everything else, na ay number one in his heart. A number one yung priority is money and possessions. And that's a very scary thing. Asabot, Anna, no matter how many righteous things imong buhaton, 
maski pang butuan kay ka sa paningin ng lahat, um, many people recognize kinsa ka because of your good deeds. Basta makayo kay kang tao para sa ila. Di jud ni mo matago when it comes to God that there is something else in your heart. Something else that holds supreme value compared to any other things, including God Himself. And in His case, it's money. Because katong pag-present na tong gihilab ta na, ang money matters, He walked away. Nihawa siya. Niundang siya sa conversation. He did not want to continue because he loved ta na iyahang possession. It just shows the kind of heart that He has. And it's sad to say that again po kayo in anak condition. In my course of many years in serving the Lord, I've seen many people who, who wandered away from the faith. Niundang sa pagtuo o nanluod sa ginoo. Because niabot sila sa point in their life that many private things na ilang ginabuhat, which were not pleasing to the Lord, the moment na gihilabta na, the moment na itok about na, the moment na na conviction in their heart to stop this or do that, manluod sila because na yung mga butang silang kinabuhi na di nila kaya buyan. But that is not what repentance means. Repentance in its very essence, its very core, is turning away from the old lifestyle toward this lifestyle of serving God. Sa to pa, in every aspect, everything in your heart, you must give to Him, confess to Him, and be willing to be changed by Him. Ugtumod, Anna, that is the failure of this man because ang possessions niya, mo itong pinaka-importante na butang siya ang kinabuhi, di niya kaya i-let go. This is a warning para sa tuwa. We must be careful when it comes to what we love and what we hold most dear because the moment God wants us to stop that or remove that or dango na, we must be ready and willing or else we, we, ang response nato will be like this man. Sayang kayo that we are not willing to let go of something very small compared to something which is eternal. And we talk about the treasures in heaven. And money is something that is very, very, very big in the Bible. You know why? Because 16 out of 38 parables talk about how to handle money and possessions. Even in the gospel, 10% of the verses deal directly about money. And so when it comes to our journey of faith, money is something that we should talk about. Dili na siya yung sa kabutang na dapat, ay di na ito istoryahan na because money dapat dili na po sa Bible. Munghatag lako, whatever, kailangan ko ihatag, and then I will let that go. No, let's talk about your heart towards money. So, klaro ko na ko ni, kanin wartime finances, it's not about giving pila ka percent. Dili ka na. But it's your condition of your heart towards money and possessions. Kana ba yung gina long for? Kana ba yung gina pangita? Kana ba yung gina aspire to? How do you respond to money. And so, pagsugod diri sa verse ni Paul, again, kay Timothy, godliness with contentment is great gain, which is a very weird na statement. Think about it. Nga nang ginansya ko pag contento ko. Diba, whenever na ay marketing, na ay any any type of seminar, na dapat mamaligi at tadagan, dapat ka netong buhatong to earn more money, the motivation is for us to produce, not to sit sit still and just wait and be content then kung sa'yo naata. Di ba opposite? Di ba i-push ka niya nga, oh, if makarecruit kag duha, makarecruit kag tulo, makarecruit kag lima, inaanig ginan siya niyo. But Paul is saying something very counter-cultural, opposite sa ato ang thinking. Because ang ginaing mo niya, be contented, and then mo ginan siya ka. Kana ang dako na ginan siya. Great gain. The same way na Peter talks about a great love that he has. Kaning labaw pa, something supreme, pinakakuyaw. Kani ang pinakadako na ginansya. If you have godliness with contentment, contento ka with your faith and your godliness ni mo, ni paris ni mo na with contentment. Which is very countercultural. Di ba kay kumutan auta, pag abot sa ginansya, pila akong tubo ana, pila akong ginansya ana. Dili, dili ani nga, mag-continue lang. Lord, what about inflation? Di ba mo baba ang value sa kwarta pag di ni mo tubo? Because Paul is saying something here that we should take note. Kaya ito bantayan. Jesus told a parable in Luke 18, The seeds that fell among the thorns are those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by the worries, riches, and pleasures of this life, and their fruit does not mature. Jesus talks about four different seeds, and we won't go to each one of seeds, but one of those is ang growth mag-stop. And what stops growth? It is 
the the worries, the riches, and the pleasures of this life. They are distraction towards us. Mo nang next point nato talks about this. Not forsaking the love of riches and pleasure will hinder spiritual maturity. You will never grow if you are in love with money and uh, pleasures of this world. There is a reason why Jesus said that anyone who wants to follow me must deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. The reason why there is a denying, kind of part denying, when we deny ourselves of pleasures nga, ang atong peers nag if atong peers will will spend this much of money because feel nila, murag ka na ang standard karon na dapat yun, ang first na ako na goal, immediately makabalay ko, or makasakyan ang dayon ko, or makainaani ko, if ka na ang, ka na ang perils, because those are perils of social media. We rarely post about things nga negative in social media. It's all about the highlights. Mo na gina-filter di ha? Very, very hadlock kayong social media because it is filtered from the process of getting those things. One time kita ang post in Facebook, it was a string of photos. And ang iyahang, iyahang journey kay nag, 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 nag negosyo siya and then nalugi siya and nangutang daw siya. And then after yung nangutang, kay nagbalin siya pwesto, nagsugod na po siya, then nasunugan daw siya. Dahil na siya nagihan, but nakapansin ako every each and every step na nagihan niya, ang yang final conclusion was that nagkasakyanan siya. And so, gipost siya, dahil kayo nag-comment dito, wow, gupuha si mong story, kuyawal na ito, kasi mong kinabuyoy. Giyunsan ni mo, giyunsan ni mo. And ako, nasa kong mind always, was that each step, nangutang siya, naningkamot siya para makuha niya ni and then it end na nagkasakyan ng China. Ako na wonder, what if utang po itong sakyanan? What if it was only, it was again, despite ang result niya na kuha siya sakyanan, and then na, na, na-inspire ni Uban to do that, makita na ko na wala mo kabantay sa habit sa iyong ginabot. Unsang habit na build niya, na sige siya utang, sige siya utang to get these things, and most probably to iyang sakyanan in the end, was also utang. Because maklaro man mo based on the habits na gibuild niya sa yung life. Gusto niya makuha ni mga highlights na nainani na, nainani na, nainani na. But underneath all those are habits na nagdali, nagchase after riches, nagchase after kwarta. And we must be careful of the dangers of social media. Because kada always ang result, maibog ta, magdali ta. We will not go through the process that God wants us to go through. And that process is about spiritual maturity. Kana ang super supreme priority in our faith. It's spiritual maturity. Kaya nga no, godliness with contentment is great gain. That's why Jesus is very harsh when it comes to our lifestyle. Therefore, any one of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. All that he has, tanan, Lord, wala pwede mabilin sa kuwa. Live in such a way that you are willing to give to God anything at the moment na pangayuon niya sa imuha. Because the more we can learn and trust his heart, ang karakter sa ginong dili man na siya killjoy. Kita naman na gunahunan na killjoy ang ginoo. Because we do not have a relationship with him yet. Tungod, if, kung kabaila lang ka sa yaha, every time mo hatag ka sa ginoo, every time you put your faith and trust to God by sacrificing yourself or delaying, delayed gratification, you will see and understand na samot pa ang rewards that you will you will reap because He will show more of Himself to you. The reason why God asks us many times to sacrifice things at itong kinabuhi in order to give Him because He wants to make room. Gusto siya na ay space in your heart for more of Him to enter in your life. Because kani mga butangan ni eh, atong pag-chase after money and possessions and fame and all the other things, Musukol man eh. Musukol ni with our devotion to God. And unless mawala ni, unless mabawasan ni, we cannot continue on or have more of God and less of us. Matthew reminds us, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Hebrews reminds us, keep your life free from love of money. Be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Wait, this is another gem na itong nabantayan about towards finances. Bantayin ninyo. Keep your life free from the love of money and then be content. Klaro na na. Four, conclusion by the author of the Hebrews. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Unsay connection. Think about that. Unsay connection. It talks about 
being content, not pursuing money or not being in love with money, it will never leave you nor forsake you. Pwede ka mo ingo na, oh, because it's a verse. It's a verse nga nag-remind sa imuha na masking malugmuk mo ka sa utang or magkinaon sa imong kinabuhi, di kanya biyaan. Muna, dapat dili ka mag always anxious o mag worry about money. That can be an explanation why. But the reason why, ang mas klaro o mas deeper understanding ani, because he correlate ang promise, because this verse is a promise, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Could it be that we will be blinded by the promises that the Lord gives if we have so much in front of us or if we are chasing a thing pirmi na contrary to what God wants in our life? Because our next point is like this. Discontent blinds us from the character of God and the promises of God. Pansinago ng mga tao who are always discontented. Meaning, kulang pirmi silang kinabuhi. Di ba sa focus nila pirmi, ilang mind always, unsay kulang, unsay naauban na wala sila, nga nung wala mo ko nakabot ang inani. O di kaya pag na opportunity, masking wala klaro, or basta na slight chance of profit, magdalit din sila, magukdun din lang, makapas din sila. And they forget, they do not notice, or they do not see the hand of God moving in their lives. This is only one of the promises, one of the verses na malinta na to, if di ta contento sa atong kinabuhi. I will never leave you nor forsake you. It's only one of those promises. And we will not develop atong relationship sa gino and learning about His promises. If always atong mata is profit, kwarta, possession, o ganimang any other things that, that combat, that rivals our heart. So we must be careful. Let's not be blind sa promises sa ginoo. It's very interesting diri kato pag continue na to, sa first verse na itong ibasa ganiya. For we brought nothing into the world and we cannot take anything out of the world. If we have food and clothing with this, we will be content. Na idua ka bukta makuha diri when it comes to contentment. First, magsugot atong contentment, this is the greatest secret. Pag magtuo ta, magbelieve ta, o magfully understand ta sa idea that in this world, Whatever we acquire, mas yun sa'yo makuha na ito, tilip na ito madala sa afterlife. We brought nothing into this world, wala tayo dala-dala, and then wala po tayo dalhun pagbalhin na ito sa next chapter sa ato ang soul's life, which is eternity. Wala kayo madala. Useless gihapun. Mas yun sa'yo yung ma-acquire ni mo. It's always temporary. Nonsense siya nga, nga goal in that sense. Job, when everything was taken away from him, yung children, yung possessions, tanan, he said in Job, in Job chapter 1, verse 21, he said, Naked I come from my mother's womb, and naked I shall depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Inana dapat atong response. Job was giving us a pattern of whether mabankrap ka in your life, if you have done everything that you can to serve God and to be free from the love of money, you are always protected because you truly believe in the truth that wala mang gihapon kay madala. Whatever, however you acquire in this life. And the next the continuation is that if you have food and clothing, enough na na. Enough na na. Because tinood na, more than 70% of the world do not even have three meals a day. Because tinood na, more than one-third sa kalibutan cannot afford to have three meals a day. And kanang di ka afford three meals a day, syempre, di sila ka-afford ng palit ng new clothing. Food and clothing, dapat malipay na ka. Muna ang ginaingo ni Paul, kana palang daan, these are reasons for you to rejoice. Kita nagtuuta that food, water, and shelter, one of the three primary needs. Wala ginag talk about si Paul about shelter. Di mo necessary na natin balay. Di mo gin- so, so how much more? Ito pa, as, so, as long as makakaon ka and you have clothes on your back, kaysa na na, that's enough. Contented na dapat ka. So, kung ka na ang basis na to, to be contented, then it should be kita na are contented. But rather, ang problem na to is ang following verses. And that's why this text point is so important. When we don't check and recheck our desires about money and possessions, we risk it all. Nga risk it all? Tanamo ko itong next few verses. Those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. 
For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. It is to this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pangs. That is a very, very, very scary thing. Nga pwede di ay, you can, you, can, you can be in the faith or be in a community nga naasa tama ang faith, but you have wandered away. Why? Because nadala ka because of your love of money. Because dili ka contento kung sa'y naata. Muna, you check and recheck, check and recheck, check and recheck. Whenever na desire in your heart that you want something na wala ka, it doesn't mean na mali din na dapat tilik ka mag-desire. But you ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, tama ba ni ako desire to, to want more than what I have? Gigan na rin sa imuha. Uh, necessary ba ni na kailangan ako paliton? Muna, dapat maging careful ta when we buy things that we don't really need. Some people na asila ani na gadget and then pag na next model or next two models two years apart or last year apart immediately mag desire ka palitun dapat ako kinahanglan na ako because na ako kinahanglan ako to do something what I want. Muna in my first na experience makatawa ko sa uban na kanang mag desire sila na gusto sila mag start sila ang business. So kailangan mo palit ko kaning the best na transportation na pwede, the best location na pwede dapat in ani 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 before I do something. Ako kami ni Sharon in our journey of faith in the Lord, especially with Ma'am Sir Finances. One of one thing among the notice is that always na I delay gratification. The Lord always teaches us something about uh, acquiring things that even mapalit namo tong butang when we ask and prayed for it, always di sa namo siya magamit because na apay delay before namo ma-enjoy to. And the Lord is always testing our hearts. And I realized ako bitaw no Lord, inatabangan jud mi nimo og appreciate and learn to lean on your on your timing whenever na yung mga butang maabot sa mong kinabuhi because you always are teaching us delayed gratification even sa akong personal life ang sa sa amo ang sa sa, sa business is that one thing so good pa lang na ako na learn sa Ginoo is that if the lord wants to use you as a channel of blessing it doesn't always have to be bongga natay na na concept na para sa Ginoo dapat bongga dapat bongga it should be in a wartime lifestyle, we should learn how to be content with the simple things. Sa pagsugod, sa paghatag sa kuwa, sa ginuog negosyo, muna makatawa ko sa uban na kinahalan ko, yaw kain yung mga computers, yung mga laptops. I started with a pension too, na, na the PC. Katong karaan na PC ni Sharon. And the Lord blessed us to that PC. Imagine a PC na dili ka pwede maglampas tulo ka browsers in Google Chrome or uh, Internet Explorer. I think ng Internet Explorer pag ganit ko ato kay mas less ang memory ginakaon. And yet, the Lord has blessed us through that. And so you don't always have to have the best. In fact, it's there is great gain na mupili ka buy something na dili the best model or the highest or the most kuyaw. No, there is wisdom many times in choosing to buy the less expensive option in order to have a a, a smaller or a cheaper lifestyle sa, sa things that we acquire. It's it's sometimes good na i-learn na tong sarili na to, to not always buy the most expensive, but rather to buy just enough unsay need, unsay dapat, unsay tama. Before we go to the last point that we have, we go also to the last few verses sa ginatudlo ni Paul diri kay Timothy. As for you, O man of God, flee these things. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and about which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Ang last na tunong point is this. Pursuing godly things is the best defense against the love of money. If you want to be protected from the love of money, pursue godly things. It cannot be na naalang kadiri in the sense that it's passive. O di na ko pursue ang money and then you just stay there. It must be proactive. It must be na if wala kay buhaton diri, ayaw contento diri. But do the opposite way. Run towards the other thing. Mabito na si Joseph when he ran from the temptation of Potiphar's wife. He did not remain stand firm. Diri lang ko, maggahit lang ko diri. Diji ko niya, mapugos, manggahit lang ko, para kang biraon ko niya, di ko mapadala. No. He tore out from his own clothes para la makat- makataka siya. Ang pagawas niya, he ran away. He fled to the other opposite direction. In a way, we are fleeing the love of money by pursuing the things. If ang love of money and the love of possessions, meaning i-itemize ni mo, gusto ko kanina gadget, gusto ko na kanina amount of money, gusto ko inani, run to the op- opposite place, meaning gusto ko mawala ako ang impatience, gusto ko ma-work on ako ang ako ang anger, 
uh, ma-work on ako akong lack of trust, ma-work on ako na wala ko na memorize verses, dapat na ako at least 20 by so and so and so. Make checklist to do goals pag-abot sa faith. Dapat ma-share na ako mama about the love of God. Dapat maingnan ako akong bitbahay that Jesus loves them. These are many things that we can do running to the opposite direction. And part of that, many times, the Lord, in order to protect us from the love of money, ingnan pata niya. O katoy mo kapitbahay, wala to'y pagkaon. Palito siya groceries. Or na kay friend that dugay na kaayon in search of me. I will use you to share the gospel to them. And many other things. Wala ta kabalo kung asa ta gamiton sa ginoo o kung asa ta kutub when it comes to to the the max reach na buhaton niya sa tong life. But pursuing godly things is always great gain because the more ginabuhat na to na, the more we become contented. The more we realize kung naa sa ato ah, is actually so much more than we deserve. Part po na is our sinfulness. The fact that we don't deserve the forgiveness and the mercy and the love of God how could we come to a conclusion that we deserve all these things na nata? The very fact na nata three meals a day and some other people wala, that's grace in itself. Mga let's change our outlook. Let's instead go to the offense by going after godly things. And so there is a huge reason why when Jesus was here in his ministry, he always talks about acquiring possessions and money. And that just shows na it's very, very dangerous Pag di na to ang pingat ng kasing-kasing when it comes to money. I pray that you do not go into many temptations, into a snare, into many things na maka-destroy sa yung life. Many people's lives and families have been destroyed. Tungkol wa nila ang pingat ng kasing-kasing when it comes to money and possessions. I pray dili ta maapil ato sa ila. I pray na karun pa lang we will decide na if na mga butang sa imong desire, na imong, imong goals to get, look at them and then offer them to God. Lord, is this your plan on what I need to get or have in my life? If daily, Lord, I give them to you. Ikaw mag-decide. Ikaw mag-decide, Lord, what you want what you want to happen in my life or what you want me to have in my life. Ikaw mag-decide because I offer this to you. I deny myself. I take up my cross and I follow you. You will be the one who will give me, the one who will bless me. All these things according to your will. And I pray mabutaan na point. Because we want more than anything else to safeguard atong faith o atong life diha sa ginoo. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for introducing us once again to perhaps isa kabutang sa mong kinabuhit na wala na mong ginabantayan. Among finances, among money, among possessions, among wants o mga butang that we look to as needs but actually we don't really need. I pray that you change our hearts. I pray that among desires to want more of you, less of us, less of our possessions, less of our money, the less holding on of temporary things, but more of holding on to eternal things. I pray that you help us. I pray that you do this for us. We will be a community that loves you above all else. Thank you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Here we are, O oh God, to worship you and to declare and say that you are our God. Oh, oh.
days, oh so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. As humbly you came to the earth you created, all full of sin became poor. Here we are, Lord Jesus. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together Together worthy, together. 